Now, guys, if you are a fan of independent wrestling, you know, I mean, we talk about independent wrestling religiously on our weekly show, that you know the guy who's on right now. You've seen him basically everywhere. He is a, he now works with Conan on Keep on Keeping It 100. Yeah. And he's also going to be part of AAA happening this coming Saturday. Which we'll get into that as well. You know him, you love him. The one, the only, Larry Dallas. Larry, what's going on? They, they love me. I know they know me. They love me too. That, that's nice to hear. That, 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 I rarely hear that. <laughs> my, 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 my ex-girlfriend told me she doesn't love me anymore. So like, this is nice to hear that I'm loved by somebody. I appreciate the, I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, it's oh, nice. You're loved, you're loved by the wrestling community. What are you talking about? I, 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 I feel like I, I remember there's distinctly being on Twitter like a bingo card. Of like Larry Dallas sticks up for you is like one of the fucking things on the uh, on the checklist. Like if someone got in trouble, so I'm loved by some um, as as a as a guy that was a complete douche in high school. Posted on his yearbook quote. Remember those yearbook quotes when you were a senior? Yeah. yeah. Said loved loved by many, loved by few, hated by many, respected by all. Yeah, like I, 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 I got maybe loved by a few. I, I haven't got the other two yet, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm gradually graduating to those other things. Yes, hated by many too. I, maybe I got two out of the three. Okay, so one of the notoriously worst things about Keep Them 100 is that the hosts, Conan and Disco, refuse to listen to the audience or look at the numbers. Uh, they will insist on bringing people on that they know for a fact that the audience doesn't like, yet they then seem to be shocked that numbers aren't growing. They're, they're literally giving the people what they don't want, and then they're going, Hey, wait a minute, this isn't going over with the people. That's one of my better impressions of uh, Conan. Uh, so today we're going over, at the time, the most recently fired member of the Kingdom 100 crew. For some reason he was brought on, nobody knows why. Uh, joining me, uh, joining today, not, not even joining, already here for this uh, audio-only episode is uh, Chadster from what show? Eyes Up Here. And the... The lovely, lovely American History X guy that does it all. <laughs> the one, the only. The guy that hates everything notoriously bad-tempered, short fuse. Mike Durban. How are you doing, Mike? Doing great. Good to see you, Husey. I don't think it's... Uh, it's been a while since we've been on a show together. Certainly has. And that's why people can't uh, see this, but I'm currently wearing a Christmas jumper. Yeah. Simply because uh, I have no idea how or if any possible scheduling... I will have over the next few months so just in case you're gonna insert my uh this footage for the christmas episode i'm gonna start now well you showed us the well, uh he interrupted me immediately oh how come i didn't get welcomed i just got what show are you on <laughs> I mean, what, what, what the hell is that yeah, i didn't even know the topic that we were talking about until <laughs> one minute 58 seconds ago <laughs> Uh, well, that's good. Husey, you showed us a couple days ago your uh, potential schedule for the upcoming Christmas season. Every year at Christmas, it seems like you release a new episode twice a week. You got a, a backlog of uh, Christmas-themed episodes, and what are, what are we going to hear this year from you? It would basically just exactly the same. Oh, okay. But it's just it's because I've learned over Christmas that... That's when most people are relaxing and chilling out, and you tend to do well on YouTube if you put a certain C word into the algorithm. Uh huh. Mm. So uh, it's t and plus I've got the YouTube membership thing set up, so I'm trying to put in a load of uh, content behind that uh, paywall. A backlog rather than a shit log. A yule log. Ah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yule grown. At our gay apparel. Mm -hmm. uh, but just to go back to that uh, thing from earlier, Durban can take this footage and insert it into the Christmas special in case I can't make it. Here we go. No more Christmas specials, forget my girl. Interrupted yeah. immediately, again. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, you just told us before we started recording, you have some huge and monumental news about your other show. 
Yeah, huge and monumental. Uh, coming uh, this week or whenever this drops, it might have already hit, but Eyes Up Here uh, debuts as part of the iHeart Media family uh, beginning uh, November 7th. So uh, if you have uh, not already subscribed to uh, Eyes Up Here on your podcast app, go ahead and do so. Uh, we have a huge, huge, huge first guest. I can't reveal it unless you download it because that was what I was told by the host, the Queen of Extreme Francine. But uh, I implore you to do so if you haven't already. But uh, very happy to be a part of iHeartMedia. All right. Well, uh, Husey, as you were mentioning earlier, Keep It in 100 and specifically Conan, it seems like they they want to force feed people down the listeners' throats, people that the listeners, 99% of them hate, despise. But it seems Conan does it just out of spite and just to amuse himself. And he even admitted that on the last episode that, you know, the reason they had Billy Body on for almost a year, maybe it was over a year, Husey. Yeah, it's uh, nearly uh, two years. Wow. Yeah, and the, the thing about that that drove me crazy is that uh, I obviously don't have the proof to back this up, but... Uh, Billy being on that show, I remember the rapid uh, decline in subscribers on YouTube. Like, it honestly was like something, uh, 2,700. Like, you could just see it every day going down, down, and down. Uh, I don't know how it affected their Patreon, but people did not want him on the show. And the fact that any time we'd criticize uh, Billy or today's topic, Larry, Conan and Disco would go out of the way to insult the listener and defend the person they don't like, despite the fact that, really, uh, they add nothing to it. Like, uh, I'm sure that the uh, the Lucha stuff has a shitload of uh, fans, the AAA, but not that many. So you're, when you're marketing to a very niche audience, why would the masses care? And Larry was, was giving us nothing... He, he was a total fucking snowflake. He was completely fucking... Like, any form of criticism from anyone, he would have to address it. And it really was a case of when it came to... Uh, the get, they got rid of Billy Body. Numbers literally went up over 10,000 new subscribers at insane pace to then they just replaced him with exactly the same person, Larry Dallas. Only, the only problem was Larry was giving us nothing we could use. Yeah. Unless you love fascinating penta discussions <laughs> <laughs> like who the fuck's that anyway yeah i mean to his credit billy would at least give some news and information and behind the scenes stuff whether it was true or not i mean at least it was good clickbaitable stuff for you to use on yeah. the what's the name of the channel again keep the 100 official on youtube and to answer your question not <laughs> Like there's uh, so much, there's so much stuff that's on that YouTube channel that uh, Billy reported that was completely fake. That that he will then deny saying it's like, but there's actual video and audio evidence of you saying this. No, I didn't. Yeah, that's Joe. He says it. It's like like Joe doesn't talk like a cunt. Well, well he does, but not an English one, which is worse than an American one. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So I would so. I mean, with Billy, I mean, I'd be fooled into actually listening to the clip because the guy who puts the clips together does it very well to fool you. So I'm able to click on it and then decide to click off of it. With the Larry Dallas clip, I have literally never heard his voice in my life. Yeah. So I don't know what he talks about yeah. outside Talk of you just saying Lucha. I, I, I can't give you any context to what he sounds like. So this is all new to me. So Billy at least could draw me in with what his content would be about. This Larry Dallas guy, I have no idea what it's going to be, you know, uh, when, what I'm about to hear. But my thing would be is why would he even be selected to be on? What mm -hmm. makes him an expert about Lucha that would make him good enough to be on their airwaves for even close to a year? Yeah, I mean, Keep No 100 has this guy called Conan. And uh, exactly. he kind of... <laughs> yeah, he kind of knows about Lucha. That'd be like Bruce Springsteen starting a podcast so that he can interview fucking uh, the guys from Sum 41 to learn about fucking how to play a guitar. <laughs> and also the thing about Larry Dallas and Billy. Uh, Chad, what's that black thing at the front of your screen that you're speaking into? Um, oh I believe God. it's called a microphone. Yes. And uh, Durban, what's your first name again? Mike. 
Oh, right. So those two things are kind of uh, important for a little thing called podcasting. Mm. I know I'm crazy. I'm the drunk guy from Ireland that has a drug problem secretly and potentially AIDS. Uh, You kind of need audio recording equipment for recording audio. Now, I know that's just me being obnoxious, being a know-it-all, but that's just one of my opinions that I have to stick to. For some reason, uh, Larry Dallas thought this would be better. Yeah, so it looks like it's the panther and the microphone, and uh, I don't care about the haters and the critics, and I don't even care at this. You're stupid. Everything's racist. Yeah. Yeah, Larry never had a microphone, and he had very poor internet connections. So anytime he was on the show or a segment, it just it's unlistenable, dude. It's it's so bad. I I don't understand why he was allowed on the show for that long because he, like you said earlier, he brought no news. He had no information about anything. His audio quality was probably the worst audio in in the history of podcasting. Joe would tell us or he'd show us like the video screenshot and it'd be Larry like sitting on a deck outside, you know, <laughs> getting drunk. That's a whole other issue, getting drunk on the air. That We'll get to that. But I mean, dude, he had very poor Wi-Fi or cellular connection. He just sounded like fucking garbage, man. And I don't understand. It's clear that Conan or Disco, neither one of them ever listened back to a minute of their show or the yeah. segments with Larry. I mean, if you would, you would decide, hey, we can't have it like this, man. We can't have this guy on the show anymore. Yeah, and it's also, um, they, they've also made the mistake of, which is something that I've kind of fucked up my YouTube channel with, because there's a comedian called Ray DeVito. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're part of a certain community, the Dabbleverse, you'll get it. But the Dabbleverse really isn't that big. So if you're doing all this Ray DeVito stuff, there's going to be, what, maximum 600 people that know what you're talking about. And I made the mistake of putting a few Ray DeVito clips back to back on my YouTube channel, which really fucked up the view, uh, the, the view kind run that I had. With with the Larry Dallas stuff and the disco stuff, they were advertising inside content. Like there was a thing on Patreon that was over an hour long of, of Larry arguing with disco. And it's like, why would anybody pay for that? Why, who the fuck would, would think, yeah, that's what I tune into the the Conan show, not for WCW stories or fucking reviews of uh, uh, whatever the fuck, the, 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 the Summer Slams and the WrestleMania. I want some drunk cunt I've never heard of debating Disco Inferno over Mexican moves. And uh, I'm I'm glad Larry's gone. And uh, it, this, this, even as soon as he's gone, the show's better. Yeah, instantly. And uh, I know, Chad, you've never heard of him before, and probably most of the people listening have never heard of the guy before um they never gave him a proper introduction they just brought him on one week and he was he was on from then on and and you know nobody knew anything about him unless you had listened to busted open radio he was on there i don't know if it was five eight ten years ago but he was on there for a while um and that's when i stopped listening when they brought him on he was i thought he was awful on that he ruined that show and i stopped listening to busted open because of him many years ago and then they brought him on Keep It 100, and it's just, he's even worse, man. And yeah, Sorry, you just reminded me of another thing about Larry that used to drive me fucking insane, is that he would go on the show and say stuff like, uh, oh, uh, like talking about being on Busted Open and then how he fell out with uh, Bobby Ray Dudley, who would be a good podcast guest for someone. It would, be. The, the <laughs> would almost show. be good to be your first guest on a show, right, when it relaunches? Well, I wouldn't advertise that. Okay, no, I wouldn't but, either. <laughs> yeah, I would also send nudes to people from Ireland. Uh, but uh, the, the other thing is that, um, so he would go on, keep it 100, and he would say shit, and then he would tell Joe to tell me, or oh, don't make a clip out of that. Don't put that online. It's like, it's like, then don't fucking say it, you dumb cunt. Don't say it into that non-existent microphone. So, so he was the guy that was on Busted Open before all the wrestlers came on. Was he with with he with, with he was with Lagreca before all the wrestlers? Well, you know, when when busted open, the busted open world, busted opens first era was uh, Dave Lagreca, and then the other the original guy uh, Doug Mortman was his name. Oh, okay. so it was the two of them for a while. Then they brought, I think Larry came on a couple of years later, and I don't know how long he was on for because I you know, again I stopped listening when he joined the show. 
Um, As a co-host. He was, uh, I don't know if he was on the entire show or what, I don't remember, but he was terrible. And um, he got, I think he got kicked off that show not having anything to do with the show. I think it was like some behind the scenes stuff or some, I don't know if it was in the Me Too era when you know a bunch of people got canceled i don't think he did anything but i think he defended somebody and for that he got kicked off yeah uh, busted open you know i mean they had a, a, a weird shakeup. you know it's got to be five or six years ago now at this point where lagreca had a co-host and the co-host got let go and that's when all the wrestlers came in and bully ray became a permanent host and then dreamer was in there and then mark henry's in there and I mean, LaGreca, I mean, he's managed to stay in there for such a long time. But again, with him, I mean, I, he's he's palatable, I guess, because he's been on for such a long time. But he needs the wrestler there to keep the listener engaged because he is such like a weirdo as a as a person. It's uh, yeah, it's weird. But I, I vaguely now remember you you saying Busted Open, it kind of toggling a little bit. But I just remember the shakeup where people were let go from Busted Open a few years back. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing that was uh, not just that on recent uh, appearances, uh, uh, Larry would come on and take shots at Joe. And it's like, hey, cunt, he's the guy that edits the fucking thing together. So if it sounds bad, it's your fault because you're yelling into a fucking xylophone or whatever you're recording with or <laughs> see i don't get that everybody that comes on as a contributor ends up going after joe or says something negative about joe but that's like some sort of weird self-hate because you know joe takes his lumps when it comes to conan and disco i mean they they take a lot of pleasure in some of those comments they make towards him but through thick and thin joe's still there okay and joe is a yeah. good contributor and everybody else is gone, but they all like to try to take their their knocks at Joe in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, the thing is, it, weirdly, Joe kind of is the most important person on that team. Oh, absolutely. Because oh, like yeah. Conan has missed episodes, uh, even when he's there. Sometimes he's so fucking high, just sort of <laughs> stares at the screen, trying to pinch his helmet. Or uh, recently, what he'll do is he'll walk out of the room, and his, his connection will slowly start crackling and fading, and then Joe will have to tell him, no, Conan, come on back in. You can't go that far. Or yeah. Joe will have to tell him, uh, lower your microphone. You know, he's got a little microphone in his headset. Because, he, you know, Conan and Disco use gaming headsets instead of actual microphones. But Conan will flip his up and then forget to put it back down again. So Joe is very valuable, and he does a great job trying to rein in these guys that have podcasted for you know, almost a decade now, and they still can't figure out how to do the most basic things. So yeah, good job, and, Joe. Yeah, and Disco, uh, does, like you see a lot of comments about it on YouTube, where Disco seems to give Joe shit because Joe doesn't know exactly what went on behind the scenes in a private conversation in TNA or WCW 20 to 25 years ago. And then uh, Joe will do this crazy thing where they'll have a guest on and he'll actually ask the guest something that the Keep No 100 listeners would actually like to know about. So Disco makes fun of Joe for that instead of going, ah, uh, do you do? Like sports and medication? I have a sore toe. Okay, great. That's great content, uh, Disco. Bet you fucking David Letterman shit himself with your skills. Yep. Uh, so, Husey, as the guy that puts out the clips on the YouTube channel, you get sent the mailbag every week, and then you go through it. Um, would you say that there was, uh, every week, more and more anti-Larry emails were coming in? Yes, it really, uh, this was something that really sabotaged the, the mailbag when Billy was on, is that he would come on the show, he'd say something stupid to insult the listeners, so then, of course, the mailbag would be full of replies, which would then take up... Uh, all this space that should be marks asking questions that that the nice boys should be able to clickbait put on YouTube. So it's just like, like hours of unusable content, really. Then Larry would come on or Billy the next week and have to respond to all the criticism, which would then lead to more fucking uh, hate mail. And it's just this endless cycle of shit. And uh, I'm hoping that that's it done now. Uh, so to answer your question, yes. Yes. Okay, well, I've selected three mailbag questions that uh, primarily were about Larry. So if you're not familiar with him, you're going to get the gist of what the large percentage of the Keeping It 100 listeners felt about him. So so I'm still not going to hear him? You're going to hear Larry, but first you're going to oh, hear okay. 
you're going to hear three emails about Larry okay. just to All get right. the uh, you know the feeling. Next is some Robbie Grant. Subject is who's better. Whoever had the bright idea to have Larry Dallas come on the show drunk to review <laughs> Dynamite when he hasn't even seen the show and was loudly yelling into his phone the whole time needs to be dragged outside and scourged Mel Gibson style. That was the worst segment ever. So who is responsible for that? Beat them, beat them badly. I love when you guys do the who's better stuff. So, I- so that mentioned Larry being drunk on the show, which happened, I think it was twice. It, one was a couple months ago. He came on very drunk, and he proceeded to insult Disco and basically say he had he accomplished nothing in the business and, and so forth. And that was the one that was over an hour, right, Husey? Yeah, that was... Uh- I'm so thankful that Joe only sent me 20 minutes of it because I immediately didn't listen to it because it's just like, fuck, like, who gives a shit? Uh, see, the, the problem is people uh, like Larry Dallas seem to think pro wrestling's real. And if you're not being booked to win a fake fight, then that means you're a nobody. Nothing to do with the money you make or any of that stuff. It's like, no, you didn't win the fucking European title in the, in the main event of Over the Edge. So that means you're a loser, and uh, and I don't. And then of course, Disco gets to respond by talking about how he doesn't care about his critics a lot because he doesn't care. Yeah. And it it was and so lot. But in regards to that segment, one of the best comment sections, keeping them on hundreds, ever had on YouTube is from that Dynamite review because Larry was so fucking obnoxious and loud. Yeah. He was yelling into his uh, Super Nintendo. Uh, which he was recording the episode with. And uh, yeah, so this it was Disco's idea to bring Larry Dallas on while he's drunk to review Dynamite, which he hadn't even seen. Yeah. Like, well, like, the, I'm the, 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 drunk, I'm... the drunk segments were, were two separate ones. The first one was the one where he insulted Disco for an hour. The one you're talking about, it was the AEW review, the AEW Dynamite. And we are going to listen to that in its entirety. Well, oh. just Larry's parts. Okay, oh. we're gonna we're gonna that's the main event for this show, uh, so we're gonna get to that. Right. But yeah, oh, you got to hear it, man. The next one is from um, Brad Price. Subject is Larry Dallas. <laughs> is there anything more? Is there anything more annoying than this Larry Dallas guy in the AW review? Just why? It's a fitting name because he just just like the Dallas Cowboys, he brings nothing to the table when he's needed most. Didn't even watch AW show. I listened to everything you put out, but if you start putting this guy on more segments. I'm going to have to keep skipping large portions of things. This dude is some podcasting jobber who thinks he runs a show. Dude, no one has ever heard of you. You're an absolute nobody. It's equivalent to me going on a podcast and trying to be the one getting over to on established stars. Please get this guy off the damn show. He provides nothing. I really hope you're not paying him for the podcast. Thanks as always. Love the show minus Larry Dallas. <laughs> Jesus. All right, let me make, make a statement here. <laughs> Conan was not available to record um, some of the reviews last week. So I had to get Larry. No, you, you. The thing is, you didn't have to get Larry. You didn't have to. Exactly. Uh, there's a there's a thing that Get My Go does that that's pretty good. Is that there's five of us, uh, especially our leader Rad Rob. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Rad Rob experience featuring the five of us. Uh, the the chances of us all having an available schedule. It, it it's not impossible, but it's very rare that we're all free at the same time. So instead of waiting for everyone to be available to record at once, we just do it without them. It, Disco did not need to have fucking Larry Dallas there. It was a stupid, stupid idea. But then if you mention that to Disco, he's like, eh, I don't care. Who cares? It's like, well, you, because you're fucking crying about it. And uh, I kind of forgot my point in the first place. So uh, here's the point is, uh, okay, Conan couldn't make it. So what you do then is you have these people called patrons. Yeah. Right. And they and some of them pay twenty five or fifty dollars to be upper tier patrons. And what you do is to reward them, you bring them on a round table. So you put out, you know, Joe will put out the uh, the note earlier in the day. Hey, anybody available for a round table later? You know, on that level. And, you know. Four or five right. people will come on, and and you'll have them on the show, and it's uh, it's more interesting than having this drunken fool on there. 
Yeah, then yeah. didn't they used to do that a lot? Because I was going to say, those guys pretend like they know more about the business than I'm sure even Larry <laughs> Dallas does. Yeah. So I remember hearing those guys on YouTube just as much as uh, I'd hear Disco and Conan talk about a review back, uh, what, two years ago? Yep. Yeah, but but they they were different because they would come on and yell into their calculators that they were recording with. <laughs> told me he didn't watch the show. So they, but he followed it enough to know what's going on and said, okay, well, fine, we'll just – so I had him do it with me. Right. So, you know, so what Mike was you know, was he? Terrible. All right. Um, <laughs> we could tell. I mean, like, what, the, uh, yeah. Has, the has thing- there been, have we heard any emails, Conan, of anybody saying, hey, go, go, great no. having Larry do the right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I think because of the fact that he had a couple of drinks at lunch or whatever it was, he, w- he was doing a little over talking kind of thing. And I think that bought, right. I think that annoyed people. Right. I asked him if he was drunk and he said no. I, I right. told him I didn't believe him then. Right. Go ahead. Um, yeah, but that's that's the deal with Larry Dallas. He's not going to be doing the reviews anymore. It was just a one-time thing because Conan couldn't do it, and he didn't watch the show. So you know, no. is, he, uh, is he is he chirping on Twitter right now, Joe? Let's see. Yeah, now it was like it was like a couple hours ago, but he might still. Be. What was he saying? What was he saying? Explain him why Sting wasn't a Hall of Famer. Wait, so he's well. Okay, so let's go, could go, you go, get, he's doubling down on that. Go to sure. some of the he's tweets. Tell me, people are thrashing him. Go, go to some of the tweets. They are. Uh, yeah, I got I got it right now. Yeah. All right, let's hear it. Go, pull it up. Pull the tweets up. Okay, yeah. How did this start? I want to know how this even started. Was it with you us, were, Conan? Yeah, it must it have been. Just, a, okay. I, I, no, no, no. I think it was at the end of the AW review, and we were talking about Sting's last match or something like that. Conan right, I remember that. Oh, that's yeah, right. So he was saying, like, yeah, Twitter. well, uh, uh, how did he get on Twitter? I think he mentioned him as a potential Hall of Famer. That's mm-hmm. how the conversation started. Well, but the, yeah, but the, the whole thing about that is, um, I, I would just love to have heard the conversation beforehand. Hey, uh, Larry, did you see Dynamite? No. Hey, are you drunk? Yes. <laughs> Why don't you come on for the Dynamite review? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the reviews terrible. only, uh, isn't it only disco reading Jason yeah. Powell's review? It's, anyway? it's the worst. No, and he's not just reading it, he's speed reading it. Yeah. So it's just, it's so bad, dude. It's like, He's basically plagiarizing Jason Powell's exact words and then <laughs> just reading it as fast as he can. And then when Conan and Joe will chime in, Glenn will then tell them, oh, hurry up. I got to go. I got to get ready for work. So, yeah, I hit that. All right, Chad, hit the third one, please. Hitting the third one. Oh, yeah. Last week's episode. All right. So this email was from the recent episode of Keeping It 100. This one, I think, sums up everything perfectly about Larry. I, this Whoever this e- emailer is. He really, really gets the feeling for Larry and the um, the audience's feelings for Larry. So this is a really good email. And next is from Patrick O'Rourke, and the subject is weird K100. This one's a little, um, just because it gets, there's some personal shit in there. I don't know. Just let me know what you think. I wasn't sure to send it, really. Well, good. Right. Maybe we have to, we, we might have to give a, a, a red card. I like those. Sorry about <clears throat> okay. Well, this. Uh, a little a bit of preview uh, about this uh, clip here. This was one I was requested from a certain non-attendee to edit out of a potential YouTube upload, which I did. So mm. you're getting a double exclusive here. Yeah. I mean, we're recording this, so we'll see where this mm-hmm. goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Patrick O'Rourke, something's weird, K100. Like a lot of listeners, I was very frustrated during the Billy Body period. 98% of the audience saw right through and despised him. And Conan and Disco kept him on almost spitefully. He thanked, he, he thanked us after by constantly talk. You hear the joy in Conan's laugh right there? Yeah, but the thing, like, I, I understand that it's funny to bust balls, but when you're chasing off paying listeners, yeah, that's that's the thing that I don't get. And it's like you, I, I, I know that Conan and Disco know that there's income that comes from it, but I, I don't think they're taking full advantage of the possibilities. Of making that moolah, you know what I'm saying, uh, Durband? Yep. There, man. Yep. Talking below the belt, cheap shots at Disco and wishing death on Conan. Conan has mentioned payback, and I hope it happens in a vile and vehement manner. We all do. Now it's a Larry Dallas. Thing. Once again, listeners are letting you know it's not working. His connection sucks. He can't even pronounce the names during his AAA previews and reports. He was effing drunk again last week, and he treats the listeners and supporters like shit when he's not drunkenly asking for fish pictures. I'll warn that later. Unbelievably, Larry's treated like he actually has something to say. If you can't understand him he's, he's, through his slurs and crackly headset, just his general demeanor made me, made, me, uh, made me stop watching AAA in English. Another imbecile who doesn't understand the concept of go-away heat. 
Another asshole taking the show, its audience, and his opportunity for granted. He should have been gone after the way he spoke to Disco, and since he wasn't, he's gotten even cockier. My comment is, is, is please learn from past mistakes because we can see all history. We can all see history repeating. The question is one. If your patrons hate Larry, whose idea was it to have him on, have him in for extra segments? He ruined the show reviews he was on, which is the content I look forward to the most. Do you really think anyone was excited when they say, when they saw AEW review with Larry Dallas? The listeners want the K103. For Lucha Libre fans, please just rotate between Hugo and Kleinrock. And if Larry must continue, limit him to one segment so it can be skipped. Please stop punishing those of us who use our free time to listen, especially those of us who love the show and pay to support it. Thanks for your content otherwise. Patrick, and that's from Temple University, by the way, of St. Andrews, Scotland. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of fighting in the Discord with Larry and Bam and Holder and Jed and um, – yeah. I, I, well, Patrick, we're, we're, we're looking into this. Let me just say yeah. that. Let's, say, let's open up an investigation, Conan. I will say, I will say that you're a, you are very correct – when you deduced that we kept Billy body on spitefully, he ended up pissing me off too. So it didn't work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Next is from Brian Dunlop and subjects. I hear right. Brian Dunlop. <laughs> I don't is believe, he- honestly, I don't believe Conan with the Billy stuff. I think it's fun. It's easy to say that now. I don't believe it. He stayed around way too long. I, I don't believe that he was, uh, you know, just doing it because it was uh, whatever he's saying now, like, Oh yeah, he, he knew and what I, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. There was way too much. The fact that he was doing all that shit with Joe and all that. They, no, I, I don't believe it. I, I, that's, I think it's easy to say it now. You, yeah. know, you know, the one thing I have to give Billy Body credit for, and I, I don't want to, but I have to, is that there was some segment with, this was back during a Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar thing, that Billy reported it, Jesus, maybe two, three months previously, and it happened on TV exactly as he reported it like bait for bait and at the time i was like holy shit we've got this great guy but that was pretty much it and conan just kept them around for way way too long and uh the larry stuff uh just like that guy another guy said he was chasing the listeners off like conan and disco will never do like a Marx show but nobody's going to listen to Keep 100 unless they are a kind of a mark in the first place. And, um, the, and what one thing we're always talking about is the fact that there's so many mark shows out there. So if you scare a mark off, they'll just find 10 other new shows and then they're pro- potentially gone forever. But they're showing marks that if you work hard enough, you can get on the air and you could be a part of the show. Because add Billy on, who's quite possibly the biggest creep hound mark of them all chasing wrestlers down at airports and hotels and restaurants and then you got this guy who i mean what is i mean how did he get to how where he is and what he does yeah i guess we need to mention that he was i I know he was involved in the new york local scene i don't know when he started or when he ended but i know that's originally where he came from and then somehow he has been doing the english commentary for the triple a I don't know if it's just the paper reviews or the TV shows too, but he does that somehow. And so he does have a microphone. I know Larry's got a microphone somewhere in wherever he lives because he has to use one to be on that show, but he never used an IKP 100. So he's got a credit on his IMDb. Yeah. That he's a uh, span or he's an English language commentator for yeah. Lucha Libre. So there and you then, go. So I'll give him that. All right. I'll, I will give him that. So he's got one. Uh, so him and Billy Body are tied. Billy Body's got the big brother. And then nothing. So he's got that, and then nothing. So they're 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 kind of tied. Yeah. But the, the ironic thing is, is that Larry would be working for AAA, but couldn't pronounce the names of of the AAA wrestlers. Yeah. Now neither can I, to be fair. But then I don't work for AAA, so I shouldn't be ex- uh, I shouldn't be expected to fucking be able to pronounce El Penta El Junior or whatever the fuck. Um. Okay, Chad. If you can click on the new one. All right, Chad. That's Larry Dallas. What do you think? What's your first impression? You've heard it. You've heard about him. You haven't heard his voice yet. But what do you think? Just looking at him, he's a lot douchier looking than I had uh, pictured in my brain. But I had him a little skinnier, a little little twerpier. So he's a little bit more, you know, built than I had expected. Yeah. But uh, I also had him sounding a little little more like this. So I don't know what he sounds like yet. So I got to get the the yeah, voice. Yeah. I don't. I don't get it because uh, Larry Dallas. Obviously, if you know Three's Company, you know Larry Dallas was. Uh, he was the neighbor, Jack, Jack Tripper's friend, 
And he was like, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, classic TV show, Three's Company, Larry Dallas, you, you know. Larry, I'm not going to say his real name, but he chose the name Larry Dallas. But it's you'd think he'd have like a 70s kind of character, right? right? You would think that. But all, all the pictures that I've seen of Larry in his wrestling days... It's like this picture on the right where he's got like a, you know, a nice dress shirt on, like a right. modern looking dress shirt, and then he'll unbutton it halfway and that's that's his whole gimmick. I don't know. I haven't I seen the video. I can't hate on that. You know, that's the New York vibe. I could tell just by looking at him. I was once referred to as a typical 90s douchebag. Mm. I would have to maybe refer to Larry Dallas as maybe a typical 2000s douchebag just by my perception of the picture, but also I'm looking at him and seeing just a guy I would have passed on the street in Manhattan walking down, you know, Fifth Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Th this guy has a lot of Alien Ant Farm CDs still. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, people won't be able to see this because it's going to be audio only. But on one of these photos, he's wearing a baseball shirt that says New basketball, York basketball. Basketball. Yeah, that's basketball. Ba so that's even more two thousands uh, douchier. Yeah. He's wearing a basketball shirt that says New York One, which is ironically how many listeners he brought to keep them 100. <laughs> and whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah. All right. So this is the segment that was referred to earlier. It's the AEW Dynamite review that Larry came on drunk. And it's just full of over talking and interrupting and uh, noises that he makes. You, you're going to hear a lot of noises. talking. In the, yeah. There's no, there's like talking in the background. There's, a lot of clicking and coughing and just cunt anything. Farts. You, yeah, there's a lot. There are cunt farts on here. Um, <laughs> I'm not joking. There are. So we're going to hear that. And this is like a 35 minute segment. I've edited down to a, a tight six minutes <laughs> of just Larry. So did you guys watch AEW? <clears throat> yeah, most of it. Yeah. Did you watch any of it, uh, Larry? Lie. I know. What, I know what happened. Okay. Yeah. So JY wrestles Penta. I don't know why they had this match because Penta. Uh, Jay White because you, you have to beat a luchador every every show. It's yeah, because right, Jay White's already in a, in a match coming up against MJF, and I don't know the, why they needed this. Is like an <laughs> uh, if anyone's fascinated by this the type of conversation, don't forget you can sign up to the Keep It One Hundred uh, official YouTube channel and uh, with the comment section that you can call us all names such as cunt. Handsome match and Penta doesn't well, lose. Just, they, just, they, just, they, have, they, they have a CMLL deal now, so Conan doesn't right. matter anymore. Right. So I then the funny, the, the, the funny thing about no. this is, yeah, is we'll this freaking guys, Jay White is set up for uh for this, his world title shot, and they had to use a finish where the Jay, the Robinson kid uh did the the what you call it with, with the ring, and he the, he punched the, him with the left hand of God, and it was, it was a screw job finish. Which didn't yeah. really a strong finish for Jay White. So. You, you, you know that Battle, yeah, I, you know I don't, Battle I don't, Royal did the worst segment that that night. The Battle Royal did the worst segment. Did it really? Uh, ratings wise, yeah. The Battle Royal did the worst segment of the of the night. <laughs> Would you like to do a uh, keep the one hundred impression? Go ahead. Right, right. After three, we're all going to name uh, the next film we're interested in seeing. Right, one, two, three. Uh, David Bram Stoker's the Dracula. Oh, thanks, Chad. You, Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this this is terrible chemistry today. <laughs> terrible, terrible. I tried twice to do my Christmas bit, and I get uh, cut off by two bigots. I am a victim here. <laughs> Chad, first impressions already. Um, not a. I mean, I really can't tell yet because yeah. everybody's kind of talking over each other in the clip. Mm -hmm. um, just one thing I'm thinking about, you know, and kind of going back to the clips from earlier where they were talking about him in the emails. I just can't fathom people arguing with uh, people online about wrestling, you know, and this is kind of talking about it still with myself and Francine on eyes up here, like in, in, reading the comments and responding to people. Like I don't argue with people when I respond to the comments. I just either thank them or respond to something. But yeah. arguing with them, I don't get it. So them arguing over each other about it, it's it's just weird. So just, yeah, keep going. I don't know. I have yeah. really no opinion okay. yet. Well, like if it goes on the right day, they're, they're like, oh, they're, they're, they get back into their routine. So the, the, that, right, that, no. you could look at that and that usually happens. So if you do an anti-Semitic angle, all, all, all the Jew haters are watching Fox News and all uh, right. CNN and, and all the Jew, and all Jew lovers are watching Fox News. So they, they weren't watching AEW. What? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know where, don't know where he's coming from. Jew on that haters one. and Jew are, lovers. Are the Jew lovers are watching Fox News, and the Jew haters are not watching Fox News. I don't know. Larry is a big snowflake, so I don't know what angle he's trying to. I, that get that over doesn't here. even make any sense. Yeah. The Jew, yeah. the Jew haters were watching Fox News. Yeah. I, I don't even get it. Yeah. I, I don't even understand. And uh, see that that's exactly why. I hate that shit on the show because Conan and Disco love to talk about political and social issues, which is fine. It, nobody wants to hear. So what's your favorite super kick there, man? But um, we, we all know what Conan and Disco's opinion will be, regardless of whatever the topic is. So if somebody says, oh, what about guns? What about trans rights? What about the uh, anti-Semitism? We all know they're going to say... We don't believe in cancel culture. We don't do all this stuff. It's like, so don't don't have the conversation. Because if you ask them that question, you're stupid because you really should know the answer years ago, not fucking the, live on the air. Is he, he's, is he, he's gay and he's trying to pick up you know, MJF and says, I, this is goofy. Yeah. Like he shouldn't be, MJF should not be at an angle like this. No. no? no it's, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a weird title run. Yeah. I'm co- I'm oh. doing that one. Oh, nice one, Larry. <laughs> it's awful, man. That is yeah. Just well, what else is he going to say? <laughs> is that your final answer? <laughs> you also recall putting the word in for Cage after you landed a dream gig, which he said you don't do when you're a new guy. Cole said part of him feels like Cage still might be working an IT job and wondering what what if. Had he not opened doors for him, and Copeland questioned why things needed to keep repeating. He said he didn't come to AEW to take Cage's spotlight or his title, but he knows the Cage will crash. We can't ask what Copeland wants at this point in his career, and if he doesn't want the TNT title, Copeland said he won't fight Cage, but he knows that Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne will eventually leave him high and dry. He said once that happens, he'll be the one there to pick him up. Uh, now, now, he, now, he, now that's he, a very that's a very Russo WWE Attitude Era angle, right? <clears throat> very inside. Uh, I don't think that fan base cares about it. They didn't seem to, based off of things you read. Um, I don't know your opinion on that. I don't know if you want to give an opinion on that. I think it's just very, very inside and not what that that audience doesn't care, doesn't know it, and it doesn't mean anything to them. He's very aware of what the audience wants. <laughs> yeah, he comes on a podcast with bad audio. That's yeah. a smart boy. Yeah, there was a lot of crackling and shuffling things around before he started talking in that clip. It's just a whole lot of nothing so far. Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's no insight. There's no, like, j- there's just nothing. There's the, how this guy's involved with wrestling. It's very cold takes of saying the obvious of like, uh, you know, you know, Turban, uh, I think that with the wrestling world, they should save the big matches for the big pay-per-views and the TV should be used to build those matches up. The, the, but that's just my opinion. What are you thinking? But to, but but to, to, Tony and I, and I, I'm gonna say something critical. So I want this on record. I said I'm critical. <laughs> Tony almost books like linear WCW Nitro. So the first year was like dream matches that pop people, and now he's booking like '98 Nitro. Inside jokes, Bullet Clubs, the NWO, BCC brawls at the end, ref silly, com- silly, silly comedy. Yo, silly com- yeah. it, 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 he's like. He's following Bischoff's uh, blueprint in a lot of ways. Eric would be yeah. very upset. Losing the ratings war, <laughs> right? All right. So here's. So this is interesting. So uh, they uh, the can make- tears. Why wouldn't they hang up on him after that comparison? <laughs> What a Joe, come on, Joe. Character. Joe, hit the X and get this fucking guy off the air. I mean, dude. what a horrible comparison. That just that was literally that was a no take <laughs> shit comparison. <laughs> the the best stuff that happens on Keeping One Hundred it, it happens at least once a month, and it's fucking brilliant when it does. But Conan and Disco will get into an argument on the air about what so some like the the most recent one. Now this is a really important issue. And everybody understands that they both got so angry. They get into an argument about a match that Kevin Nash had with Lance Storm in 2000. And they had a huge, like, eight-minute-long, loud, yelling argument over this fucking TV match. Uh, We want to hear fights on the air. If Larry's being a dick, cut him off. It's like Easter eggs that that, that no no one's searching for, no one knows. 
All right, so at this point in the show, Conan came on late because Conan is always late. Like, mm, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's like, hey, yo, 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 let me speak on this. Conan's here. <laughs> right. All so right. Let me, yeah, uh, let me let me explain something to Larry. You're not the moderator here. I <laughs> right. say that. Oh, I was trying to shine. There's something good for you, boss. Yeah, don't need any help. Yeah, this ain't, uh, a, you know, uh, this ain't a duo. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, we're, we're, we're a trio. It's me, you, and D.I. Uh, it's really. K100 featuring hey, Conan, D.I., and L.D. You're just a guest. That that was not the master of ceremonies, my friend. Yeah, and that's the other thing about Conan is that he's uh, very unpredictable to talk to because you've no idea what mood he's in. Yeah. You could you could say hello to him on twice in one day and get completely different reactions depending on if he's in a good mood or if he's ready to fucking kill someone. So Larry, right there, is immediately overstepping. His uh, mark, ironically, with uh, Conan. Like, like, don't be overly familiar to say, "Hey, how's it going?" What do you mean, how's my doing, bro? <laughs> I'll just, I'll just put together an old outro and cobble it together, so that way you don't feel so rushed. You know, don't, you know just, I, I don't, want, I don't want to interrupt this, this, uh, this, this <clears throat> review with a, the, a story we could talk about after the review. No, I got you. Well, okay. I just got here. I don't know what the fuck let's, you were let's, doing. Let's, let's, we're, 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 doing. We're, half, we're halfway, we're halfway through the interview. All right, go ahead. There's Disco trying to hurry things up again. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, th- that's a perfect example of what I said uh, before. I, don't, I can't remember what it was Joe was talking about, but he was bringing up some uh, news story that is exactly the sort of thing. Uh, for Keeping it 100, the reviews usually go behind the paywall. So for any fan who's paying to get the reviews on Patreon... Joe was uh, either breaking news or talking about some type of news story in the review. So there's a little bonus for the fans. Disco can't have that. Uh, they, they need to hear me read Jason Powell's review. I'm busy. A whore is, is sucking a rapper's dick and I have to mop up her face. Sports. Over and over. And it's like they're. All right. We talked about cunt farts earlier, right? I think there are some going on in the background. Over and over, and it's like they're not getting any funnier, you, you know. So I, I don't know. Did you see so, this, Larry? I did not. You got to Cody. Right. You have to see this. It, it's it's absurd. Okay? I right. saw I saw the one last week with him on the um like that was job. stupid. Right, it's a, was it was stupid. similar. Like a long, it was similar, but it was it was stupider. So for, 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 for a second, I I thought that he didn't actually break his ankle and it was all an angle to, to screw MJF. But now that he got an actual surgery, I, and now it's, now it doesn't make sense. If it, if it, if it, if it, if it was like a Bob, of, regardless if it, Bob it, Orton fake arm thing, it would have been good. Well, right. regardless if it was a swerve or not, the vignettes have sucked. Go ahead. Right. All that static that that's going on whenever he talks, it's just, it's not pleasant. What I don't get is when they're recording, do they know that it's bad audio? I, I think remember so. once they had a uh, oh god, I can't remember the name. Just say it was fucking. Just say it was Hulk Hogan was on the show, and this is what the the audio sounded like. This like, while the guy was uh, driving while in his car, and, and it's like, did, can nobody hear this? And then Mike, we had from I think it was Mike was, Mike Bennett. Mike Bennett well, was in his car when he was on the show. Yeah, and uh, see that shit is like he couldn't have done it before or after the fucking car. And I I don't understand. And that that's I'm so like Larry had to go, because yeah. and whoever they get in next, all they've got to do is see. I'm lucky enough. I get to go on the 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 Shuli network every once in a while, and in the email, they always say, "What well, to come on? We require you. Do you have a another floodlight? A fucking a, a lighting thingy? Yeah. Uh, do you have a microphone? Do you have a laptop or a PC? Do you have?" Uh, this so that they'll give you all the stuff that they kind of need you to have before they're going to let you on, and that's all that they've got to do with whoever they bring on next. Say, do you have a setup to record with? Yeah, because if you don't get one, or we can find someone that does. I'm going to put that on the producer, Joe. You should be arranging all that because you know they had Hugo Savinovich back on this week. Uh, he sounded better than he has ever sounded before. Normally, he's really shitty audio, but um, this week it was a lot better. But Joe, you need to be telling these people, "Hey, 
you got to have a microphone, you got to have headphones. We went through the pandemic, you know, everyone's doing interviews at home on Skype and Zoom and all this shit. You would think that people would have bought even the most cheap podcast equipment because everybody was doing podcasts back then. Every wrestler, anybody in the business, anybody in entertainment, but still you got these people that don't have a fucking basic microphone set up. It's unreal. Yeah, I have to say, you know, when we used to do the Triple Threat podcast, you know, I mean, we just let Shane use the uh, the iPhone headset that had the little microphone here, you know, because obviously we don't have a budget and he wasn't buying mm-hmm. anything to enhance the, uh, the, the his side of the call. But now that he's doing the podcast with the guy, James, from the Wrestling Shoot Interview channel, have you seen his setup lately? It's completely different and they put some money into it and it's awesome and it's it sounds great and it's a great presentation. So if you're going to be a part of something, you got to you got to enhance it. So if you're going to bring a guy on who's going to be a part of your show every single week, either put out the money to get him a microphone, give him something that's going to enhance your product because it's going to be a representation of you. Not saying that that's going to change the content he provides. Same thing with Billy that might not have changed the content they provide, but at least becomes palatable for the listener. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the, the Billy was 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 so weird in that he wanted to come on to talk about himself. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it was the strangest thing where I remember he got into some argument with Joe because Joe shockingly didn't want to put Billy's life story out on the, the podcast. And, and Billy was furious about this. Like, he said, why don't you tell my connections? It's like, because they don't give a fuck. And, and the... Joe was politely trying to say, "Shut the fuck up, you you know what." But right. but but no one dude? ever kicked out of Hogan's fucking leg drop ever. So like, I I get what you're saying with that, but it's it it, it styles evolved, man. Action movies evolve. Yeah, but it turns off the guy that's like, that's like, flipping through no. the channel, and I know ah. that because I've had casual fans tell me that. They're like, I can't. It's too. It's too dude, dude, uh, over dude, the top. It's n- not realistic. No, no, no one turned off *Lethal Weapon* four because Jet Li took too much punishment. No one turned off *Lethal Weapon* four because. <laughs> Hey, bro, I came home from the real big fish gig, bro. <laughs> we ordered some Zaw, had a pie, a few brewskis, watched Lethal Weapon 4. <laughs> Fucking banger night, bro. <laughs> Bowling uh. for soup's going to be on later, dude. Cherry popping daddies. Uh, yeah, I love this new Bon Jovi album. It's my life. It's bangers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right. Bro, right. that so, uh, Vin Diesel guy can act. <laughs> Just because fucking um, whatever the fuck, Nick Nolte took a fucking triangle and was done. No one stopped Stop. watching the weapon. Four. <laughs> I'm not going to allow that shit to be said. Nick Nolte in fucking Leaf the Weapon. That was Gary Busey, you dumb cunt. Yeah, yeah. Which, wow, uh, Le- yeah, Nick Nolte. <laughs> Jeez, what a miss. <laughs> yeah, and FYI, Leaf the Weapon 1 is a Christmas film. So they got five months to get to that, you know, and see who it's going to be. Re- uh, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. What's a I don't, I, I don't, I don't think. What the, what the fuck is the noises he's making, dude? Like Joe, I don't get why Joe just doesn't hit that X and, and cut off his connection. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, Alanis set just released a, a cover of Last Christmas. <laughs> oh, you're talking about now or back in 2004? Right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I was trying to record a cover of Last Christmas, but I kind of gave up. It sounded pretty good, but it'll probably never get completed. Okay, Axel. You know, and see who it's going to be. Re- uh, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a I don't. I don't. I don't Revolution think Revolution's in March. Famer, though, you know. <laughs> Who, Sting? Sting? Yeah, Sting's like a regional legend. He's not a Hall of Famer. Oh, he's, oh, what? He's a regional uh, legend. What? Uh, he's a regional bro, guy? Bro, WCW. Fucking, bro, WCW with, are you with, drinking with, again? <laughs> yes, he is. WCW with the Crow Sting beat Vince McMahon for 83 weeks. That's not a regional guy. <laughs> Doesn't make you he was, like, a, he, was he was on a national show, 605 TBS, all around the United States. And bro, young young Sting, because I was, yeah. you know, bro, what he, is, was, what, he was the what, man. What, what, right. what you, dude, dude, you drew better than Sting your whole career. Okay, but we're not... Comp- 
So now he's trying to kiss Conan's ass. Yeah. Come on, dude. Come on, man. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And then yeah, I love how Conan wouldn't <laughs> correct him on that point. You know what? Like all these new millennials and younger than that, the, the podcasters now and the so-called journalists, like when they say shit like this, that the Attitude Era was, you know, they tried to minimize it and everything. Like, I'll give them a pass because they didn't live through it. Larry is like our age. Larry lived mm-hmm. through it. This motherfucker should know that what he's saying is a complete falsehood. And the thing is, is that you can tell he's not joking when he says it. He actually believes what he's saying. Yeah. And it's just fucking stupid. We're comparing if he has a Hall of Fame and you're saying he's a regional yes. guy. Hall like he's stating he, he's like he's stayed like in North Carolina his whole life. No. I think he was a everybody. He got- I love podcasts where three guys with shitty audio connection talk <laughs> over each other, don't you? <laughs> it's just the best. I don't understand why they do that because it like because it has been like a complaint for a while. Like just just uh, if if like that's one of the reasons why on the, the the wonderful podcast it's Shuzy Hello, which is available on all good uh, services. Plus, you can see the video highlights on the uh, Huge Entertainment on YouTube. All the clips are really long because everybody gets to speak and say their point, and then another person says their point, and then another says theirs. Everybody sits back and relaxes. Uh, and it gets nice clickbait in the end. Just yeah. just let people finish, and then because it's that's the whole thing. I've got to give credit to the great Mike Durband. Mm. Uh, sorry, the even greater John Wangland. Oh yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I remember go. he radio said legend John Wangland. Uh, radio legend. That's right. I'm a tough guy. <laughs> Loves talking beaver with his dad. <laughs> He was a huge draw in Brazil. But I remember he said about keeping the 100 and it was some other show. I think it was one of the Russo shows. He said they release, so they record conversations, not shows. And to be fair, they make a point. All this talking over stuff, it's a shame because they seem to be about to make great points. And then it all gets uh, shut down because because I gotta I gotta go clean a horse bra. <laughs> she got <a> coming bra. <laughs> uh, and come on, Larry. Everybody you knows. Be a fan. Everybody knows Larry, who yeah. Sting is. Everybody. He'll, everybody. The, the, bro, Larry. The Bushwhackers are Hall of Famers for Christ's sake. Well, yeah, that's true. You guys tell me Sting's not a Hall of Famer. Tell me like, Hall of Famer, like actual Hall of Famer, different things. Well, I think Sting's in the Observer Hall of Fame too. I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna tweet that out, and we're gonna see the burial of Larry Dallas. Oh, on Larry. Yeah, well, oh, why? No. So, what you guys? Come on, real and say, Sting's not well, a Hall of Famer. Let, guys, let's finish this. Yeah, go so ahead. Because we want to get to the lucha. Yeah. RJ City set up a set up an <laughs> So they're doing this and they still have to do the Lucha segment, which is the whole reason Larry was on. He didn't come on for the he wasn't supposed to be on the AEW review. Yeah, and I'm glad Joe said that because Joe's a very relaxed, laid back guy. Yeah. That's his way of sort of saying to Disco, Yeah, let's stop the, the shit that people would actually tune in for so that we can talk about Mystico versus <laughs> Penta and a and a fucking mask on fire match or whatever. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with this one. So Disco did tweet out Larry's comment about Sting in the Hall of Fame, and of course he got buried. But one of Larry's arguments was that uh, Conan was like the number one guy in his promotion, and Sting never was. It's like he basically said like because Sting was never Sting was never the number one guy in the promotion, so he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. I'm like. Well, how many guys were the number one in their promotion? I mean, th- that's such a small list. Come on, dude. Yeah, you know, you're you're totally right, Durban. That is such a, a marky thing to say. Yeah, it's like uh, 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 Scott Hall was never champion. He's not that good. It's like just shut the fuck up, you mark, and just yeah. enjoy the show. And Darby's beating the both of them. Hey, up. How are you? Um, <laughs> and then a. Uh, I can hear you, dude. Yeah, I got him. I got it. Go ahead. <laughs> so Larry's carrying on a conversation off mic, and you can still hear it. And Joe finally muted him. Oh, man. Yeah, it's... It, it, it's... Uh, it's exactly. Terrible. What can you say about that? I mean... He shouldn't be on a podcast. No. And even if even if you are going to bring somebody on, if you have a microphone, it'll it'll be sound a lot better. Christian's best performer in AEW right now. Oh, that's, can I, huh? 
You mean that's got he's a, the best performer in AEW right now, Christian? Well, I'm I've, sure. we've, me, me, me and Drisco have always yeah. said with all the all the managers that they have there that are mega whack and Jojo and me nothing and at it nothing. There's only two good managers: Don Callis and fucking Christian. Hundred percent. Okay. Hundred percent. Dude, that's You're why. You're right, Conan. Yeah. He used to say that on Busted Open, like every time someone would make a point, Larry would chime in, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's what. That's the main reason I stopped listening to that show back then. Yeah, that's that's what I call them, uh, Pink Panther talkers, uh, where they always feel the need to chime in. I'll give you an example. Uh, Durban, tell me about your day today, and I'll give you some Pink Panther talking. Uh, I woke up at about seven thirty a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I got up, went into the kitchen. Oh wow! Yeah. Started my breakfast. Took the dog out for. I love uh, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like shut up, you cunt! I'm fucking talking. You know, where does the pink panther come in? Because well, usually they go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> also, uh, I have a. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, I have, a, I have a dick like the Pink Panther, if anyone wants to check out my uh, Instagram. Mm. So you just did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, I don't even know who the fuck they were, but it was uh, like a handicap match. Uh, huh? Dutch and Vinny. Maybe, no. <laughs> Wait You're a right. minute. Dutch and Vinny, are those friends of yours? Huh? I know, I, I know, I know Dutch. I think it was I, Vinny Marseglia. I know and, Vinny. Uh, <laughs> and, and Bobby Dutch. Well, anyways. You know what it sounds like? Uh, it sounds like he needs cream for his audio. It's so crackly. He's got athletes <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Dude, that's the worst, man. Um, well, that was Larry's last appearance on Keep It 100, hopefully forever. Hopefully he'll never come back on. Yeah, and, and according to Larry, he's quit because he, was, uh, he wanted to be paid more or paid full stop. But the simple fact no, is... No, no, no. That's not what Larry said. That's the truth. So you're, you're breaking the... Ins mm. yeah, yeah, you're, you're revealing some insider news. We're going to read Larry Dallas's official reason for leaving, according to him. This is his tweet a few days ago. I will no longer be... I will no longer be doing segments on K100 Conan... <laughs> At this point in my life, being a full-time student, all of my time needs to be on school or financially beneficial. Okay, so there's the financial thing. Yeah. But if, the, oh, go ahead. The, but the fact is, is like when Billy Bobby was on the show, he used to get paid a percentage of, of Disco's YouTube money. Yeah. Which uh, really used to piss me off, because mm -hmm. I can see mm -hmm. some of the numbers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, I I sent Conan a screenshot of how much the most recent wrestling reformer had generated in something like four months, and it was something like $27, yeah. right? Now, if you split that four way, like it's a complete waste of time. Larry was getting nothing put on YouTube. So what the fuck was he bringing to the show? Uh -huh. Nothing. So he was getting paid nothing because he deserved nothing. How much did K100 Kids with Austin Body, how much, how much did that <laughs> generate financially? $3.90 something. <laughs> so that's not even a, a dollar each for the, for the, the, the four of the, the main guys. The dumbest fucking idea. Hey, bro, I got a, an idea for a YouTube show. It's two people that don't have any recording equipment interviewing people on YouTube. Like, that's great. Uh, so Larry continues, if it has neither, I can't be part of it. I'm 39. Days of me doing things for exposure isn't it. I appreciate the opportunity, but it's not the opportunity for me. It isn't how I need to spend my time. When I'm done with school and got things rocking, worst case, I can do my own thing. Yeah, what? which which means playing Tomb Raider, and listening to some sweet corn, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I should be listening to some banger Lenny Kravitz instead of hanging out talking with these marks. Love you all. All right, so that's his version of why he's not going to be on the show anymore. I heard a completely different version from another person, which is the truth. Quick question: Is Conan starting to get tired of Larry Dallas? He seems to be easily irritated by Larry, and he's starting to talk to him the way he would talk to KG before KG took a hike. Entonces, ¿qué onda, Conan? ¿Te tiene hasta la madre de Larry? That's from Andy. 
So basically, this guy's asking me in Spanish, what's up, Conan? Are you sick of this guy? So Larry, tell, tell the story, Joe. He, he, he hit you up first. Well, he, he wanted to be paid for his uh, segment. And he, he said to me something like he's not going to dedicate his time to anything that doesn't have, you know, compensation that he's in right. school and he just doesn't, he can't do it, you know, stuff like that. So that's what happened. He went to Conan for money. And well, here's the thing, bro. He wanted money. And I'm thinking to myself, Disco, and you can play devil's advocate on this if you want. Okay. So you're on the show 10 minutes for one week, maybe 15 minutes when it goes long. How much should I pay you for that? I, Cause you're not really drawing anybody. How no, much you're, should you're, I pay you for that? He's doing what the other guys do. You, you're pissing the fan base off. Right. And should I give fans you a, are, are, the fans are telling us that this guy's bad for business. Right. Like right. literally that's, that's a, a good point because <laughs> seriously, bro, you don't have yeah. to, you don't have to travel, you don't have to dress up, you don't have to prep, you don't have to get in a car, you don't got to fly. What am I supposed to pay you for? I mean, the majority hate you and it's not making us money. Should I send you a six pack so you could fucking stay in a drunken stupor? Uh, you know what he did? He did what KG did. Remember that shit yeah. that we talked about Sting? Remember that he said he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame and we said he yes, should? Right, yeah, yeah. Yes. right. Bro, he went on Twitter to try to get people to like uh, agree with him. Agree, right. You know, <laughs> and nobody, nobody Blizzard nobody himself, did. KG. No, yeah. yeah. And bro, you're wrong, Larry. I know it's hard to admit it, but you're wrong. So this is Larry's version of the story. But uh, goodbye for now, Larry. Um, hope you never come back. Is there a uh, is there a tribute video? Yeah. The, the, the one yeah, John thing, John Wanglin's working on it. John John's doing it. For us. He's <laughs> uh, the one thing that I will say about Larry is that he left the show like an adult. He wasn't like Billy Bobby going, yeah. "You're all fucking losers, and your show's gonna die. We're gonna overtake you in two days." Larry, Larry's <laughs> uh, clearly sober when he tweeted that, and uh, he says, "Yeah, I'm not gonna do it anymore." Yeah. So. I don't think he's gone forever, but yeah. I, I highly doubt he'll be back uh, in 2023. In fact, you know what? I should get him on for the Christmas, K100 Christmas party special, get everybody wasted. Now, that's that's content. Uh, content? Yeah. Um, yeah, he did go out gracefully. You got to give him that credit, unlike the other person who, as recently as yesterday on the show, he just dropped on the dirty sheets. Uh, Joe was telling me that Billy is still, you know, we're I think we're six or eight months after Billy's been kicked off the show. He's still threatening, and uh, now he's threatening a lawsuit against certain people related to Keeping 100. Yeah, yep. Against who? Conan and Joe specifically. Wow. <laughs> because they they said wow. that they said that uh, lock betting was not profitable or whatever. Now it's this is not, a guy. This is a guy that's threatening to get a lawyer and sue people. When um, I don't think he's got money to hire a lawyer because it's the same person that's waiting outside the restaurant that Arnold Schwarzenegger is eating in in London, and he's just just to get an autograph or two so he can flip it on his website. That's right. You know that's the guy that he, dude. If you need to do that, if you need to waste three hours waiting for a guy to finish his meal, and then when he, you know, denies your son's autograph. You know, all of a sudden he's a racist and he's a cunt. <laughs> you know, yeah. this this guy's gonna call up a lawyer and, and and dude, you couldn't afford one one hour of the lawyer's time, man. Stop. Yeah, and, and what's the lawsuit, uh, Your Honor? They said I'm not profitable, but I am. It's like, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, so give me five million dollars and some wrestling t-shirts. Imagine they got to play his audio in court and judge <laughs> rules. Yeah. Guilty. By the way, judge, will you sign my DVD of Real Big Fish live at the fucking Big Brother after party? You slag. You know, I'll just continue to, to harp on this is that all these people who go through the K100 world that are they come in, they have their segment, they blow it, they're gone, they go out in a blaze of glory. But yet, Get My Go is still ridiculed, and each one of us are idiots, and we're rejects, and we provide nothing, and we're stupid. Uh, that's He asked if you're going to be at the Get My Go party WrestleMania weekend, Conan. So how long do you want to suspend this guy for? All those guys you just mentioned are too boring and too <laughs> lame to hang out or party with. No disrespect, but bro, who that is, is that crew that you're with? Like who's going to be there? Um, intent, who, no, no. Who's that get my go click? Not who's going to be at the fucking okay. party. Uh, who's me, that get my go show you guys have where you blow each other every week? And me, Durbin, uh, Durbin, Husey, 
the Chadster and uh, the Aussie guy, Dean. And okay. we've had I don't know Rose who the Chadster had. is, but the name is very lame. Sounds like a hamster. All you guys are fucking lame. Hamster. And uh, uh, all, di- all disrespect intended. And we're all this yet. Each one of us has these great things going on, and we're doing this, and we're doing that, but we're all the idiots yeah, in the yeah. K100 world. <laughs> Keep the 100. Kunan and Disco won't even promote the YouTube channel. This is the way it goes. We have a YouTube channel run by the Irish Lush. I won't do his show. Hey, you know, he sends me these DMs, and he's trying to be funny, and it's yeah. like, thanks, guy. That, that, that's, that explains everything about the YouTube. <laughs> the, 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 everyone will know all the content that's on there. Uh, he, he interviews these comedians. No one's ever heard of them. Yeah, except you go on any of these other shows, and all they go is, oh, Husey, he's so great. Oh, Husey's so funny. <laughs> oh, you got to watch Husey's show. He just had this guy on who said this. It was crazy. It was this. It was that. But no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't plug the YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got Conrad Thompson coming on to talk about baseball. Uh, uh, we had Josh Towers on the show uh, last week to talk about uh, the baseball preview. Yeah, nobody cares, dude. Yeah. I remember a couple of weeks ago they had this cunt f- on called Mike Whoa. Durban talking Whoa. about NWA, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "No, dude, I'm banned from the show. You won't hear me on there for a long time, at least until the end of the year." Because uh, I met up with Conan a couple weekends ago, and we had a mm-hmm. business we had mm-hmm, we had mm-hmm. a business transaction. <laughs> he paid you the. <laughs> 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 no, I, I paid him. No, I I, I had to he pay paid him. him the Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of <laughs> kind of left in my mouth afterward. Oh, wow. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. All that now you're making it sign. <laughs> yeah. um, no, so I had to meet up with Conan. We, we had a business transaction and I paid him in cash. And when I gave him the envelope, I had a, a Get My Go sticker, which you can oh. get from me. If you, anybody wants Get My Go stickers, let me know. Uh, but I put a, a nice Get My Go sticker to seal the envelope full of cash. And I gave it to him in front of, um, it was him and a bunch of uh, other luchador legends that were in the car with him. And I ended up getting banned from the show for the, at least until the end of the year because of that. So, Okay, uh, let me tell you this real quick. I saw a frenemy of the show, Make-A-Wish participant. Uh, oh, yeah, so let's, are you talking Mike about Durbin? Durbin. Well, let me just tell you real quick. My friend Mike Durbin. So, Mike, uh just so you know, your thing has gone from one week to one month because... Oh, no, no, I it's going to go longer, longer than that. It's going to okay, go longer than that. Okay, but let me tell you what he did. I got, I, got more, I got more information. I signed some figurines for him, right? He paid me, and he was really cool. But he decided to pay me in an envelope with this. Okay, oh. yeah. So, bro, oh. okay, Conan, look at this. Yeah. I got this in the mail, okay? Right. This was mailed to me. I didn't... Uh, right. but, oh, what, what's Mike Durbin sending me, right? All right. Oh, Mike, okay. Mike, Mike, Mike. Why on earth did he think that he's sending me this? And I'm, I'm just wondering what the mental acumen is of a person that thinks that I'm going to, <laughs> that, that I want this. Uh, right. <laughs> All right. So what's the suspension now? How long? Two months? I think we give him to the end of the year. Maybe wow, he'll learn that way. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah, job, he, Durbin. He I mean, so let me tell you this thing. Thank you for the stuff that I, I absolutely. Did not ask for him. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to open this. Wow. Yeah. Um, right, uh, and he, well, he won't do my show because some cunt bitch sent him a joke on Twitter. Uh, so now, of course, this goes like, "Hey, says stupid things." Um, well, Chad, that's your first time, and hopefully the last time hearing Larry Dallas. What do you? What's your? I have still no opinion. <laughs> um, I'll erase what I heard from my brain and go back to not knowing uh, what he sounds like or uh, that he looks like a typical 2000s douchebag. Yeah. yeah. I guess, you know, you're hearing it all in one morning. I mean, if you had to hear it like I do, I, I love Keep It 100. I love the show. Big fan of the show. I listen to it every week. And for the last six plus months, I've, it's had to be poisoned uh, from this individual. So for me, I have more hatred for it. But, you know. And that's all. That's. I'm sorry, Husey. This last time I'll interrupt you. That's from a typical '90s douchebag to a typical 2000s <laughs> douchebag. That I'm saying that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Keep number 100 doesn't need like a, a fourth mic ever. This would just be Joe Conan and Disco. That's when it's at its Great. best. Yeah. And I just realized that if Conan comes on, 
we will do a top five uh, Sugar Ray songs. <laughs> <laughs> and and if someone can't make it to the recording, like, dude, they can just do it, just the two of them. I think one of the best pay-per-view reviews they ever did was Joe and Conan alone without Disco. And they did, I think it was an AEW pay-per-view review, and it was so good because... You know, Joe had the list in front of him. He went through it, and he didn't plagiarize anybody. He just mm. went through it point by point, who won, who lost, and then Conan would give his expert opinion on it, and that was a tremendous review. But, you know, Disco speed reading through Jason Powell's review is trash. To find me on social media, <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, at the Hughie on Twitter, at the Hughie on Instagram, and if you uh, join my, subscribe to my YouTube channel, <coughs> uh, Huge Entertainment, uh, starting very soon, there will be a lot of uh, new content coming for members only. Mm -hmm. And it's set at the lowest tier, so it's not like uh, it's going to charge you 10 fucking $15. It's like $2 uh, per month for all of this and a lot of older videos that I've found in files off that will all go up behind a paywall. Uh, and enjoy or don't who gives a fuck but yes there will be for the rest of the year only christmas recordings christmas party episodes all kinds of stuff although this year i'm not going to be getting drunk on the air because i got so fat last christmas <laughs> hmm. wonderful chad in addition to the um did we say it was iheart radio I yeah, iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia, wherever you get your podcasts, it's eyes up here. Same same podcast, new platform. So if you haven't had it before in your podcast app, download it, subscribe. Also on YouTube, get over there, subscribe. We got memberships as well. Don't have any Christmas shit coming, but we got a lot of ECW. So subscribe over there. What? Well, there may be if if schedules work out a Francine and Chad Christmas appearance on uh, it's Susie Hello mm. and I'll uh, come on her face. I have been <laughs> compiling another top five if you if you want Christmas songs again. I've been working on it since last year, so if you ever if you need me again, I've got it in the database. I've been compiling. But with that being said, uh, at Chad EMB on Twitter, at IB Exclusives on Instagram. And my below the collar page is going away. They're closing. They're Are going really? away. They're, yeah, they're closing at the end of the year. So get those shirts while they can before I move them to another store. Wow. Are they folding it into the regular PWT? They didn't they just... say. They didn't say. They just said folding? I could buy them in bulk. <laughs> they could say I could buy them in bulk forever, but they're closing below the collar. Oh wow! Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Durband at Get My Go Show, YouTube.com slash Mike Durband, YouTube.com slash Get My Go. Is it Get My Go Show or not? I don't know. I think it's YouTube.com slash Get My Go. If you want stickers, join us in the Facebook group. Yeah, look at that. I like that you kept it sealed in the package. Well, I have and to grab it right here. Yeah. Anybody listening to this should either on the YouTube comments or send uh, uh, Durban uh, messages to for at least 2024. We will have Get My Go holiday merchandise in the works. Oh, Very yeah. sparkly pink. Yeah. Let's come on it. Maybe a couple of dicks. <laughs> That's what the real people want. Also... Let me think. Do I want to break this news now? Let me break see. away. Let me see here. If anyone listened this far in the show, if you didn't get turned off by Larry Dallas, if you're still listening, <laughs> um, you're going to get this breaking news. Follow at Conan Bendy on Twitter. And that's B-E-N-D-I-E. At Conan Bendy on Twitter. That's all I'm going to say. Follow it. Because there's some big news coming that involves me and my Cuban friend, Charles. All right, that's it. Chad, take us out, please. We're out of here for this edition of Get My Go. Glad to have Husey back on. It's always great to be joined by him, even though his Christmas sweater is gone. We will see it, I'm sure, again in the future. But we will get out of here for this week. For the Husey, for the Mike Durban, I am the Chadster. We will catch you on the flip side. A good app, guys.